when uh, the strategy 2020 was launched uh, by the new uh, Barroso Commission, when the Innovation Union was launched, when we read it and we said, uh, okay, there's these are tools, uh, platform to build up a greener, an healthier, a smarter society. We look at Europa Bio and we said, well, we are there. We are ready to contribute. It's exactly our mission, it's the mission of our members uh, to do our part there. If we want to steer clear of another food crisis, we have to ask ourselves an important question. Are we prepared to increase the amount of land used from conventional agricultural production by the size of area that of Portugal. Because that's exactly what it will take if we're going to keep prices stable. Alternatively, we could adopt biotechnology and allow the productivity improvements and yield gains associated with this technology to account for these necessary increases in productivity. Freedom of choice for every farmer in the world to decide which tools and type of farming to use in his pursuit for a better life. I would like that EU institutions base uh, their decisions just on science. And I would like that researchers and companies carry on bringing new biotech crops. What I've seen on the screen today um, on the, the, uh, the experience of farming is what people should be seeing. They don't see it. When we talk about responsible innovation, responsible to me means responsive and careful. Um, I certainly believe that no other industry is more responsive to uh, humanity's three fundamental needs, being healthy, eating, and looking after our environment. And of course, it allows also, coupled with the information which we gain through the gene sequences to, to develop biomarker, to be at the, at the bridge of starting personalized medicine. Personalized medicine meaning that we get individual cocktails, I think we are quite some time away. What we do have today is stratified medicine, that we can identify groups of patients who have a real benefit of the treatments. I see uh, biotechnology as one of a number of tools to promote better health care for patients. I, as a patient advocate, I would be very much looking for choice and uh, for patients to choose uh, in partnership with their doctor what particular treatment therapy they need. Biotechnology seems to offer some, some fantastic results. Uh, it's something for, in terms of medicine I 100% support. White biotech has got great potential in, in Europe. Um, um, my 2020 wish would be that, uh, that Europe meets the EU's goals for 2020, um, which I think are 2020-20, um, in terms of renewables and, and, uh, and, and everything else. Um, and one component of that will be something like biofuels. Most of these benefits are really longer term uh, benefits here. So it's not just only a, a, a calculation of what the benefits now will be, but really what the benefits will be in the future uh, here. And of course, that's also always more difficult. There is much more uncertainty when we think about future, uh, future benefits uh, here. But it's actually those future benefits that make it so, so important here. But the costs, of course, are now and the benefits are in future here. So you need much more risk taking. Oh, the industry uses a lot of uh, uh, chemical products, chemicals to process um, our materials, our textiles, and a lot of these chemicals can be actually replaced by a lot more sustainable uh, biotech um, uh, uh, innovations, uh, like enzymes, for instance, which are already starting to be used. It's not yet widespread, but it's something that really is, is coming quite importantly in our industry. Everybody can win, everybody can get there, but that requires a common understanding, dialogues from regulators, legislators, citizens, consumers, patients, healthcare providers, and as well as, of course, our industry and our role. <laughs>